identical. Exactly the same machine. There's no difference apart from the paint. In most cases, you are being ripped off. Hi guys and welcome back to the show. Today we're doing a review of the Shepak HMS 850 planar thicknesser specifically and this type of 8 inch benchtop planar thicknesser in general. So let's not waste any more time and get right down to this. So let's get the specifics out of the way. The motor is a 1250 watt one, the planer is a 204 or about 8 inches. The thicknesser can do 4 and 3 quarters or 120 millimeters. And the beds are 355 millimeters, so about 14 inches. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. Now before we go into the specifics of the review, there's two terms I need to explain so that you can understand my reasoning and the conclusion in this video. These two terms are OEM or Original Equipment Manufacturer and VAR which is Value Adding Reseller. Now we're not going to go into the specifics of international logistics chains here but we're just going to scratch the surface so that you can understand the conclusion. You can think of the original equipment manufacturer as the factory or the company that owns the intellectual property of whatever they are producing. And the value adding reseller is the company that buys these products to sell them on. Now the value adding reseller is just that. They're supposed to add value by reselling the product. So we need to ask ourselves the question, what kind of value are they adding? Well, it can be approval to local, local regulations. They can do marketing of the tools. They can try to keep a lineup of a series of tools. There's a lot of things a value adding reseller can do. Now there's nothing wrong with division between a original equipment manufacturer and a value adding reseller. In fact, most of the companies that you know or the brands that you know to a certain degree have a lot of VAR products within their line or OEM products, you can call them. Say for instance, you have a well-known company that are selling industrial type machines, but they also want to sell to consumers so they can capitalize on their well-known brand by purchasing machines from other companies and selling them on. But what is important for us as consumers is to know what kind, if any, value are they adding and you have to know that most of these machines are identical. To illustrate this point I'm going to use these two chip collectors. This one is the Shepak HA1000 and this is a MEC which is the generic brand of EULA which is a Scandinavian version of Lowe's or something like that. These two machines are identical. The only thing that, that separates these two machines are the paint. So if you're looking at two machines and they have very equal specs and they look very much the same, it is because they are exactly the same machine. And this brings us down to purchasing tip number one, which is if it's a VAR or OEM product, go for the cheapest one because they are identical. Of course I wish I knew this when I purchased the Shepak HA1000 because it's more than twice the price of this one and there's nothing, there's no difference apart from the paint. So if you're looking at a product that is surprisingly similar to other products but more pricey or more expensive, make sure as a consumer that there is a reason to pay for that. And I'm not saying that there is no reason because they can be, they may be they're supplying spare parts which can be really difficult to get for these kind of low-end products like this but just make sure because in most cases you are being ripped off. And if you want to know more about the OEM and VAR you can check out this link it's to a blog post by a friend of mine and he explains more about OEM and VAR. So that brings us right down into the review of the planer specifically. And this is the long and short of it. 
don't buy the Shepok. Since I got this machine and learned more about them, I have checked the prices and the Shepok one is more than double the prices of other brands out there. And there is no difference, no difference other than the paint. Now that we know that all of these products are the same, I've seen, I don't know, dozens of brands that sell exactly the same planar thickness. So I even saw a brand called Gouda that were advertising this as German quality, but it's not German quality, it's cheap Chinese quality. They all are, because it's the same machine. And that basically ends the review of the Shepok specifically, which is don't buy it. Get the cheaper version, which is any other brand. Just get the cheapest one you find, because I guarantee you they are the same. No matter how many numbers they put behind it, HMS, whatever, it's the same machine, just get the cheapest one. So let's look at the business end first. The head has two knives. They are really cheap to replace and it's simple and quick to replace them. They are easy to adjust using these two screws here and you can easily make your own jig or just use a piece of wood or something to aim and get the knives well set up. There are two set screws that you adjust instead of the spring-loaded ones that you see on the better or more expensive machines. And personally, I think that this method may be a bit easier to adjust, since you don't need a magnetic jig and such. The thing that really lets this machine down is the fence. It's just a piece of cheap stamped out thin steel, but that's not the real problem. The real problem is the way that it is attached to the machine and these two arms back here that is supposed to support the fence. They are real thin and if you have a workpiece with any kind of weight, then you're basically flexing the fence, bending it, and you won't get a square cut. And if you don't get a square edge on your boards, why do you need a planer? And as you can see, I've modified my planer with a DIY fence, but it's a lot of work. And don't underestimate this in your purchasing decision because it's not the simplest of things to make. Now the tables are fairly flat, at least as much as I can, as I can measure. And on my machine they are also as parallel as I'm able to measure. So that's good. You can only adjust the infeed table on the planar part of this one and it's adjusted by this knob on the side. For a safety aspect, the machine has micro switches that are attached to the dust shroud, meaning that the dust shroud needs to be attached for the machine to work. The thicknessing bed is raised and lowered by this detachable handle. The mechanism works okay, it's quite clunky, but this is another letdown of the machine, and it's this bed or table here. It's, it's not sturdy at all, and when you feed in boards that have a, a little bit of weight to them, it actually, not the, it actually bends a bit. Also, the thickness of bed is way too short. This adds to the snipe, and I get about 10 to 15 centimeters, or about 4 to 6 inches of snipe, even using another board behind the first one. I have made a longer bed for this, but it adds weight, and the attachment points to the four lifting posts just have too much slack in them. 
Now you can reduce snipe by gently lifting the board as it is about to exit the cutter head, but what this one really needs is a longer bed. I've had boards not come out parallel because of the bending of this table here. And this is another real letdown of this machine. Changing from planing to thicknessing mold is quite simple, but it's annoying that you have to remove the fence to do it, and it's really a design oversight. Now this clearly is a product meant for the DIYer and uh, you know consumers, and I want you to be aware of the limitations of that this machine. But that doesn't that is not specific for this machine, but for this kind of machine, being the planer thicknesser with this style of bed and. You know, realistically, you can only get good cuts with twice the size of the bed, meaning that's so 28 inches. It was a 14 inch bed, so 70 centimeters, so more or less. I've done boards up to 130 centimeters, and I've struggled getting the bow out of them lengthwise. But again, that's a limitation that pertains to all these kind of machines and not this type of machine in spe uh, specifically. You know, I've been slagging this machine a bit, and for good reason, but it is a quite powerful machine, and I recently thrown a lot of white oak on this one, and to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised, uh, you know, the performance of this machine with sharp knives and only using the planing part of it. So what are the pros and cons of this machine here? Well, firstly, it's quite powerful for its size and it has a good capacity in the 8 inch width of boards that you can run through it. The blades are cheap and they're really simple to replace and to adjust. The physical limitations of this machine I'm not going to call a con, but it's nice to be aware of the fact that the boards that you can expect to plane um, Accurately with this is like twice the size of the bed meaning you get 28 inches or about 70 centimeters So what are cons with this machine? Well, first of all the fence is Very close to useless and Making a DIY fence for this machine is or it may be a bit intri more intricate than you'd wish to be honest the bed for the thicknesser is it wobbles a bit and that adds to the to the snipe as well as it may give you problems getting parallel faces on your boards and it is way too short to give good support on both sides and i know i said this in in previous videos but the fact that you have to remove the fence to change the machine from planing to thicknessing mode and vice versa is simply a design oversight and they should really have made a workaround so that you could leave the fence on while, while thicknessing. So should you purchase this machine? Well, first of all, if you are in the market for an eight inch benchtop planer thicknesser, meaning this type of machine, do not buy the Shepok. I've seen them come with new versions of this machine now with a different number. It's ex still exactly the same machine. The fence looks a bit more beefy, but it's still attached the same way, so it doesn't change anything. Don't buy the Shepok, go for the cheaper version. If you can get by with using single purpose machines, I suggest you look at the bench, the five inch bench top planers. I've seen some good reviews of those. I've never used them myself, but it's a suggestion. Take a look at that. And if you're able to use two machines, you can combine that using your normal lunchbox thicknesser. If you're just starting out as a DIY woodworker, this machine will work for you. You may have to do your jointing or joint your boards on your table saw or using different techniques. Now, if you're starting out as a DIY woodworker, there's nothing wrong with this machine for you. It can serve your purpose for a while until you outgrow it. Especially, it may be a good pur purchase, especially if you go for the cheaper versions of these ones. But really, once you start developing your woodworking, doing more intricate builds than 
you know, your birdhouses, then you really need a larger machine. But again, guys, I hope that was helpful and I hope I didn't come across as too negative when it comes to this machine. But again, that is it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. Should you want to support me, you'll find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. If you don't feel like that, you can help by telling your friends about the channel on your social media of choice. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. owns the intellectual property of... <sighs>